Recently, I've been made aware there's an even easier way to get TechnoParrot set up in LaunchBox. So I'm redoing my tutorial to include those optimizations. We're gonna be covering some stuff that I've missed in my previous video, and we're gonna be covering some frequently asked questions. And the entire process has been streamlined so we all know what we're doing. If you're familiar with my guides, you know I'm here not to waste anyone's time, so let's just get straight into it. First up, and this is quite important, is where you need to keep your games. If you bury them in too many subfolders, they're gonna stop working. So we're not gonna use the games folder in LaunchBox. We're gonna go to the root of the drive that we're using and create a folder like I've done here and call it TechnoParrot, or you can call it Arcade PC if you wanted. But we want this as close to the root of the drive as possible. After reviewing the comments from my previous video, it would seem there are two types of users. There were users that like to separate these games into their respective arcade platforms, and then there were users that consider TechnoParrot to be one big platform. So you can pretty much guess which camp I'm in. I like to separate all of these games into their arcade platforms, but you don't have to do that. You can just have all of your games in this folder location here. So it really just comes down to personal preference how you separate those games, if at all. As for the TechnoParrot emulator, you can put that in the emulators folder of LaunchBox, or you can put it in the TechnoParrot folder like I've done here. Doesn't really make a difference. Moving on to getting TechnoParrot set up in LaunchBox as an emulator. So start LaunchBox up, go up to Tools, Manage, Emulators, and then you wanna press the Add button in the bottom left-hand corner. And then with the emulator name, that's obviously TechnoParrot. And then with the application path, you want to press browse and then find where your TechnoParrot emulator is located. So that's there for me. Let's just find that. There we go. And then you want to find the TechnoParrot UI EXE and just press open. Now, the default command line parameter is the secret source. This is a huge optimization. So I'm just going to paste this in here and I'm going to put this in the description below. Then you want to check the remove file extension and folder path. Make sure you do both of those things. Whilst we're here, we're gonna add an exit script because when using TechnoParrot in LaunchBox, it doesn't always exit out correctly when you hit your escape key. And you need to add this to the exit script or the running script. For me personally, I needed to add it to the exit script for it to work, but other users report needing to use it in the running script. So if it doesn't work with one, just try the other. So I'm just gonna paste that in there. And again, I'm gonna pop that in the description below. Before we can go any further, we need to associate at least one platform with TechnoParrot. So just go up to Associate Platforms on the left-hand side, double-click in this box here, and then type out the name of the first platform that you're importing for, or just TechnoParrot if you're importing that way. So I'm just gonna type out TechnoParrot. There we go and we're gonna use this as our default emulator. Now, if you are separating into individual platforms, don't forget you'll need to add them here as you add them to your LaunchBox build. So that's everything for the emulator setup. So we're just gonna press OK and close, and that's TechnoParrot all ready to go. So now we can move on to importing games and setting up a custom platform at the same time. Now TechnoParrot does differ to other emulators because we're going to be importing the game profile XMLs. Now here comes the tricky bit. You need to make sure that you're importing the correct XML file for the desired game. So for some of these, it's pretty self-explanatory like Alpine Racer, that's pretty easy to identify. But these ones that are basically acronyms, I couldn't take a guess but there is a quick and easy way to identify what XML file you should be using. So if you start up the TechnoParrot UI, select the game that you want to import, and if you open up the wiki, the game profile identifier is in the URL right there. And that's the easiest way to figure that out. So now I can come back to the XMLs, go all the way down to SSASR, let's find that. Why can't I find it? There we go. And I know that I need to import this one if I wanted to import Sonic Racing. Once you've figured out which XML files you're gonna be importing for your platform, just go up to Tools, Import, ROM Files, just press Next. We're gonna add files, not a folder. And then obviously you wanna find your TechnoParrot emulator 
and go into the Game Profiles folder. And then you want to select all of the XMLs for the games that you're importing. I'm just going to import three games for this example, and that's going to be Contra, House of the Dead 4, wherever that is, there we go, there's House of the Dead, and Silent Hill. There we go. So press Open once you've selected all of your XMLs, then press Next. And the platform that you're importing for is probably not going to be on this list of defaults. So you want to create your own custom platform by simply typing the title of it in this box here. And for this example, that's Techno Parrot. There we go. But it could be Taito Type X, Raw Thrills, whatever you need it to be. But you want to make sure that you're scraping all of them as Arcade. Then just press Next. Make sure you select Techno Parrot as your emulator. Press Next. Use files in their current location. Leave this checked. Press Next. I'm not going to tell you which artwork to download, so I'm just going to skip that. Make sure that you leave all of these unchecked. Press Next. And I'm going to stop here because what we're about to cover is the most awkward part of the whole process. A good 70% of these XMLs are not going to be correctly identified by the LaunchBox database, which can cause issues with even just finding the game that you want to play. This happens because the LaunchBox database uses the ROM title to search by, or in this case, the game's XML title. But because these are named so arbitrarily, the LaunchBox database either misidentifies them or doesn't identify them at all. Now, there are two ways that we can sort this situation out, and I'm going to show you both, but both do require a little bit of hard work. Now, the first way is to change the title of the game in this box here. Now, whatever we change these titles to is what the LaunchBox database will search for. So we can edit these to whatever we need them to be. So I recommend that you bring up the TechnoParrot UI, find the game that you're importing, and just copy the title exactly. So this is meant to be titled Contra Evolution, so let's close that down. So make sure that you're exact. And there we go. So I've changed that to Contra Evolution. And that would do the same for House of the Dead 4 and Silent Hill. So let's check out Silent Hill and see what that's meant to be titled to. And there we go. Silent Hill The Arcade. So let's go back to this. So I'll make sure that I put the space in there. All the punctuation. And there we go. There we go, so now that's all correctly titled and the database has a fighting chance of correctly identifying these. I'm going to leave House of the Dead the way it is so I can show you how to do it the other way which is actually my preferred way. So I'm just going to hit finish and wait for that to import. There we go, diddling, and then we're actually going to have to find our arcade platform. So if we click on Contra Evolution here and take a look at the metadata and the write up on the right hand side we can pretty much assume that this is correctly imported under the correct ID number. And if we have a look at Silent Hill, we can pretty much confirm that this has also been imported correctly. But if we take a look at House of the Dead 4, there's no metadata and there's no database ID attached to it. So we're going to right click on it, go to Edit, Metadata and Media, and we're going to search the title of the game. So just House of the Dead 4, there we go. I'm pretty sure I should have put a the at the front of that, but we'll just search for it anyway. And we don't want the special one, we just want the normal one. And there it is. So we're just going to press OK. And that's it. It's easy as that. So that's my preferred way to do it, just to make sure that everything is as correct as it can be. Making sure that these games are correctly identified should be your main focus. And if you think that a game has been incorrectly imported, you can just right click on it, press edit, metadata and media. You can clear the LaunchBox database ID out of it, and then you can just research for the game. Then just select it, press OK, and you're golden. And from here, you're good to play some Techno Parrot within LaunchBox. So just start up a game and enjoy. But before I let you go, I do just want to cover one frequently asked question, and that is about exiting Techno Parrot with a controller. Unfortunately, TechnoParrot doesn't have a native way to do this. However, it is achievable within BigBox. But you need to make sure that you have your button combination set to close window, not exit emulator. 
Outside of that, you'd need to use a auto hotkey script or a joy to key to be able to do that. But I'm happy to just press escape on my keyboard. There we go, that's how to set up Techno Parrot in LaunchBox. Hopefully I managed to save you some time today, so slam me a thumbs up if I made that happen. And if you want to keep up to date with these tutorials, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.